The other day I was thinking about how definitions of words can change over time, and I also realized that people can change them to suit something that helps their agenda. I've thought of about five very good examples of definitions changing over time to help suit a certain narrative. The first one that came to mind, and the most uh, obvious one that made me aware of this, was the term preference, or more specifically, sexual preference. During the confirmation hearing for the Supreme Court nominee Amy Coney Barrett, uh, the senator from Hawaii happened to say that the term sexual preference was an offensive term and it was outdated. Now, the day that this hearing happened, that was not on the definition of dictionary.com. However, after she made that statement during that hearing, the very next day, dictionary.com updated the definition of the word sexual preference to include offensive. Now, I've talked to a couple LGBT people who don't find the term preference to be offensive whatsoever, so it might be a small minority of people that actually do, or if you want to get a little conspiracy theory about it, uh, they might have changed it on purpose to make Amy Coney Barrett look like she didn't really like gay people. The second example is a more recent one. The term anti-vaxxer had an old definition, but it has recently been updated. Uh, Pretty much a few weeks ago, the term anti-vaxxer meant somebody who is against taking vaccines. They don't want vaccines. They don't think vaccines work. They're just, you know, they are against vaccines. Very simple. Now, the term anti-vaxxer means somebody who is against vaccines and against vaccine mandates, which means even if you think vaccines are good and you take them yourself, but you don't think people should be forced to take them, you are now an anti-vaxxer by definition. The third example is going to go back to Amy Coney Barrett's confirmation hearing. The term court packing at one point had a definition. It meant adding more seats to the Supreme Court so that more justices could be added to give your party a favorable majority. At some point, I'm not sure when the exact first instance of it was, but Democrats started to refer to court packing as just filling up the courts. Like somebody has to be nominated and get confirmed by the Senate in order to fill a court. And when the Republicans started nominating people and voting on them and confirming them, that was apparently court packing, not adding seats to the Supreme Court. It was just confirming justices was court packing. Now, court packing's change was you know, not a slight shift. It was pretty much an entirely different definition, whereas with preference and anti-vax, it was just kind of a slight shift from the old meaning. Example number four is, again, just a slight shift in the meaning. Once upon a time, the term racism basically meant prejudice based on skin color or the belief that one's race was superior or another race was inferior. And there was another term called institutional racism, which was basically systems of power built around uh, the concept of racism. Things like segregation were definitely institutional racism. They were part of the systems of power that ran the country. However, in more recent years, the definition of racism has just merged with institutional racism. And you will often hear people say that racism requires prejudice plus power, and therefore people can be prejudiced, but they cannot be racist unless they have power. Basically, it means that if you were to, say, hypothetically wish death upon all people of a certain race, that would only be racist if you happen to be the race that held institutional power. If you wish death upon an entire race, but your particular race does not have institutional power, then it's not racist, it's just prejudiced. To make my views clear, I find that view absolutely stupid. The fifth example I'm going to give is one that has not fully played out yet, but I can see it playing out in real time and suspect it will be done by the end of next year. The term conversion therapy, when you ask most people, they'll think of it as kind of like the electroshock therapy where people would try to convert people from being gay into being straight by basically torturing them. However, in modern times, conversion therapy appears to be getting a new definition. It is trying to convert someone away from their gender identity as well. Meaning that, theoretically, if a little boy says, I am actually a girl, and you tell them, no, you're not a girl, you're actually a boy, that is conversion therapy. However, there is a second new definition of conversion therapy that I also see going up, which is basically an exact opposite of the example I just gave. In this second new definition, 
if a little boy goes up to you and says, I am actually a girl, and you say, yes, you are in fact a girl, that is conversion therapy, because you are converting them away from their true identity, according to that definition of conversion therapy. In Canada, as of recording this video, uh, that first example I gave has already become law there, and it, I've seen potential propositions for a law in the UK to have that second definition of conversion therapy, which would be very interesting to have both countries ban conversion therapy, but for opposite definitions of what conversion therapy is. I'm sure it will not be long until the call for banning conversion therapy comes to the United States, and it would be very interesting if both Democrats and Republicans are both in favor of banning conversion therapy, just from opposite ends. But anyhow, that's pretty much the video. Those are just five examples of definitions being changed over time, potentially to suit a political agenda. I hope you enjoyed the video, and let me know what you think.